When it comes to horror and its abundance of subgenres, body horror has to be one of the hardest to swallow. Rife with mutations, mutilation, gore, and torture, it goes to the extremes, pushing the boundaries of what is morally acceptable and what is perhaps too much to stomach for an audience member. So, today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scary body horror movies that are hard to watch. Before we begin, though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. In at number 5 we have Tusk. I know a lot of you hate this movie but I love it and I absolutely love discussing it so let me have this. Directed by Kevin Smith and released in 2014, Tusk is a body horror comedy starring Justin Long, Haley Joel Osment and Genesis Rodriguez. The plot concerns a US podcaster played by Long who ventures into the Canadian wilderness to interview an old man who has an extraordinary past and the American quickly learns the man has a dark secret involving a war. The idea for the film came during the recording of Smodcast 259, The Walrus and the Carpenter. In the episode, Smith and producer Scott Mosier discussed an article featuring a Gumtree ad where a homeowner was offering a living situation free of charge if the lodger agrees to dress as a walrus. This in turn resulted in the creation of the movie after Smith had his Twitter followers vote on whether they would want to see that on screen. Now, while the Gumtree ad turned out to be fake, the movie was released with Smith taking things to the extreme, with Justin Long's character having his legs amputated and being sewn into a war suit. And the moment we finally see Mr. Tusk in all its disturbing glory, well, it's not easily forgotten and will linger with you for years to come. Love it or hate it, Tusk is undoubtedly a disturbing body horror that is tough to swallow. Ultimately met with mixed reviews, the movie garnered a 45% approval rating, with the general consensus reading, Tusk is pleasantly ridiculous and charmingly self-deprecating, but that isn't enough to compensate for its thin, overstretched story. I disagree there. I thought it was genius. Who doesn't want to be a walrus? In at number 4 we have The Incredible Melting Man. Directed by William Sachs and released back in 1977, The Incredible Melting Man concerns an astronaut whose body begins to melt after he is exposed to radiation during a space flight to Saturn, driving him to commit murders and consume human flesh to survive. The film starred Alex Rebar as the main character, alongside Bird Benning as a scientist trying to help him. The screenplay was originally intended as a parody of horror movies but comedic scenes were ultimately edited out during production and new horror scenes added. Sachs apparently didn't agree with this move, with producers being the ones who decided shooting a straight horror film would be more financially successful, with the film suffering as a result. Despite that, the gruesome visuals and makeup effects from pioneer Rick Baker were undeniably impressive, with one of the more disturbing scenes being when our hero, Steve West, attacks a woman through a window, resulting in him getting his melting arm chopped off by a meat cleaver in the process. Now the movie received horrendous reviews Reviews, with it currently holding a mere 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, with Chud.com stating, The Incredible Melting Man is a singular theatrical experience that truly lives up to its crazed, pulpy title. Originally intended as an homage to the great atomic age horrors of the 50s, William Sachs's clever satire was recut by its original distributor to cash in on the horror craze. In at number 3 we have Videodrome, directed by David Cronenberg and released back in 1983. Videodrome is a Canadian science fiction body horror film starring James Woods, Sonia Smith and Debbie Harry. Set in Toronto during the early 80s, Videodrome follows the CEO of a small UHF television station, Max Wren, who stumbles upon a broadcast signal featuring violence and torture. The layers of deception and mind-controlled conspiracy unfold as he uncovers the signal's source and loses touch with reality in a series of increasingly bizarre hallucinations. Wren quickly realises that he has bitten off more than he can chew when he begins to experience these hallucinations, such as as his torso transforming into a slot that can play video cassettes. In the scene, the movie's villain declares, I've got something I want to play for you, before popping a pulsating organic videotape into Ren's body. It's very sapphic. The film currently holds an 80% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with the general consensus reading, Visually audacious, disorientating, and just plain weird, Videodrome's musings on technology, entertainment, and politics still feel fresh today. Trace Thurman of Bloody Disgusting listed it as one of eight horror 
horror movies that were ahead of their time. Not to mention it was also selected as one of the 23 weirdest films of all time by Total Film and that's pretty spot on. Videodrome is a classic for horror movie fans, however it's definitely tough to swallow, especially if you're going in and not knowing what you're going to get. In at number 2 we have The Human Centipede. Directed by Tom Six and released back in 2009, The Human Centipede tells the story of a deranged German surgeon who kidnaps three tourists and joins them surgically mouth to forming a human centipede. At this point the movie is notorious and requires little explanation but I'll proceed anyway. Now whether you've watched this movie or not, you've certainly heard about them, especially the first one, also known as the human centipede first sequence. It is by far one of the most outrageous and disgusting works of body horror, with even veteran horror lovers running a mile away from it. But don't fret, I've watched it twice. The movie is not something you will forget easily, if ever. The image of the three innocent people attached, mouth to haunting your dreams for a long time afterwards. By far the most disturbing moment for me, anyway, is when they realise they will eventually have to go to the bathroom. And there is absolutely nothing they can do about it, but slowly pass it along to the person behind them. Mouth to ain't if you get what I'm saying. On top of that, no scene is sicker than the one in which crazed Dr. Heiter wakes up his creation who are now sewn together as they cry out in terror and he weeps tears of joy. The film of course polarised critics and viewers alike with it garnering a 50% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. With the general consensus reading, grotesque, visceral and hard to uh -huh, swallow. The surgical horror doesn't quite earn its stripes because the gross outs overwhelm and devalue everything else. Despite receiving mixed reviews, the movie did go on to win several awards in 2009 including Best Picture slash Movie at Fantastic Fest, Screen Fest Horror Film Festival and the Saint Maxim International Horror Film Festival. Not to mention it resulted in two sequels creating an epic trilogy. If you are feeling nostalgic for the Human Centipede franchise, don't fret because if you head over to Tom Six's wiki page, you'll find the Human Caterpillar, which is currently marked as to be announced. I for one cannot wait. <laughs> And finally, coming in at number one, we have Antiviral. Directed by David Cronenberg's son, Brandon Cronenberg, and released in 2012, Antiviral is a Canadian French science fiction horror film starring Caleb Laundry Jones and Sarah Gadden. The film takes place in a blackly satirical near future where Sid March is employed by the Lucas Clinic, a company which purchases viruses and other pathogens from celebrities who fall ill in order to inject them into clients who desire a connection with celebrities. Essentially, if you're an obsessed fan, you inject yourself with a celebrity's illness to be just like them. To make extra money, Sid uses his own body as an incubator, steals pathogens from the lab, and sells them on the black market. As you would expect, the movie contains some seriously disturbing body and medical horror as the movie progresses, with it quickly proving that the Cronenberg apple doesn't fall far from the tree. One of the particularly disturbing and noteworthy scenes is a dream sequence in which Sid imagines himself transforming into a twisted fusion of man and machine, and honestly, it will haunt you long after the credits roll. The movie garnered a 66% approval rating with Tim Roby from the Daily Telegraph calling it an eye widening delve into conceptual science fiction with the gruesome verse of his father David Cronenberg's early work and morbidity to match and says there's real muscle in its ideas, a potent kind of satirical despair and a level of craft you rarely expect from a first timer. Well there we have it, do you guys agree with our list? Are there any body horror movies that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, top 5 scary horror movie openings. Courtney Kettle said, Hearing the thirst comments Lucy reads out is actually more terrifying than the top 5 scary list she presents. Well just think of the thirst comments that I don't read out. Some sh** in that comment section. Trust. Angel Flores said, I'm very surprised the opening to Ghost Ship wasn't on this list. I figured that movie was a shoe in for the list. Part two, perhaps. I don't know how I forgot about Ghost Ship. It just slipped my mind. Forgive me. It's because I hate the film. St. Dan in a nutshell said, Such a great opening 28 weeks later. It made me in the cinema. I completely agree. I love 28 weeks later. It f terrified me in the cinema. When he's running and they're chasing him. Mm, no, thank you. Daniel Gimba said, I watched Keegan for the Mimi outros and Lucy for the pure and filtered sarcasm. 10 out of 10. Thank you. It's just me being me. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I think most of you interpret just me as sarcastic, but. Most of the time I'm just me. Nicholas Zurich said, Lucy, you are my undisputed queen of horror shock and all things that go bump in the night. I wish I could marry you and worship the ground you walk on, just saying. Well, just tell me how much money you've got and maybe we can discuss what it comes down to at this point, really. Yeah? Just kidding. I don't need your money. I've got my own. Largo778 said, wow, nice tattoo on your arm. The Mountains of Madness. I kind of wish it was the Mountains of Madness now. Missed opportunity. It's just regular mountains. 
nothing news or noteworthy. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later.